Welcome to post game on the pitch, and we're doing with masks on this uh, this edition. So exciting to have to the far left, the originator, the man that created it all, Jackson Phelps. Welcome, thank you for post game on the pitch. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, boss. Thanks for having me. All right, here we go. Okay, fellas, let's go right at it. Uh, from right to left, uh, we have Brandon Brown of Eli Sports. And John Marshall, who are you repping? Radio Cascadia. Radio Cascadia, and of course, uh, Jackson Felds, 950 KJR. And uh, again, I just want to shout out because he started all of this years ago. So, all right, Jackson, what did we see today in the 1 1 tie? It was a, it's a tough match in some parts, Maz. I think one of the things we all kind of stood out to us was the fact that Atlanta dictated that tempo. They won possession with about 63%. And, and not that. You know, winning possession, not that winning that battle is necessarily the most important thing for Brian Spencer to prove in the team 5 0 1 going into today. And possession wasn't really a big part of this team's whole moniker. They didn't need to win possession now. So we knew that going in. But when you have a team get 63 and dictate the tempo like Atlanta did today, it, it's a little bit of a tough situation for Seattle. So we saw that. Rudy edges the goal in the sixth minute, grabbing that lead early with that outstanding header. And Really, from there, we saw Atlanta dictating that tempo throughout both halves. And I'm not going to say that it felt like it was coming, but for me, Moss, it, it, you know, when Joseph hits that penalty in the 86 that comes on an unfortunate PK, and at the end of the day, you look back at the statistics, you look back at every part of it, one to one unfortunately feels fair, uh, but for Seattle, you're, you're sitting here. If you're working with your emotions, no matter where you're at, you're probably saying, God, we were this many minutes away from all three points. John, you had a good point that we talked about in the press box. They had chances to put this game away. Oh, absolutely. They had plenty of opportunities, not just in the, the first half, but even in the second half when they weren't playing as well. Um, Goldan, Christian Goldan brought it up in the post-game uh, interviews that you know, they didn't have that third man running into the box, uh, and they didn't have enough hold-up possession in the final third to you know, save time for that guy to come in help out with goals there, uh, to score goals there in the middle of the box and get guys in the attack. So they really struggled with that today. And, you know, credit to Atlanta. They did, uh, you know, put a lot of pressure on Seattle. They pressed high up on the wings and made it very difficult for them uh, to get to same possession in the final third. Uh, but really, I think that's something the Sounders are going to be looking back on after today. It's how do they uh, control games again. I think you know, possession we talked about earlier, just a second ago, other than the uh, Minnesota game, they haven't led possession stats at the end of the game all season long. Hasn't been a big deal for tonight, but we see tonight what can happen when we don't uh, get enough possession and don't control the game well enough. Are you worried? Is this now the Sounders kryptonite? Has somebody found the Achilles heel to beat the Sounders? Uh, I don't think necessarily, because like everybody else said, possession hasn't always been the big part. Um, and the Sounders have been good on the counter attack. You've said it several times in the box. This is now a counter attacking team, and just that final pass wasn't there. So I think it was just an unfortunate night for the Sounders. They just didn't quite have that final pass. There were several times where, you know, I don't think the right pass was made when we got down into the attacking part. It, it, it just kind of broke down, and you heard it in the press, uh, the post game press conference. And I think, yeah, this Atlanta, you know, came in and did what they're supposed to do. But I don't think every team's gonna be able to replicate that, and I don't think the Sounders are gonna let it down as much as they did today. Let me jump in there because yeah. Miles, you asked him about finding that that you know something to go against this team because teams have not been able to figure out how to stop the three five two. Yeah, yeah. everybody's yeah. Mm -hmm. just been absolutely. We know the personnel. We've seen we've seen the Sounders personnel a number of times in that four two three one. But the 3 5 2 is a whole different thing. Alex Rodon is a much different player at right wing back than he was previously. Yeah. Brad Smith the same way on the left. And when you look at what can beat the Sounders, here's the interesting point that Wade Weber brought up in our post game show on KGR. And that's the fact that Atlanta's the first team Seattle's faced all year that worked with a back three. Yeah. No other team has worked with a back four, uh, worked with a back three yet. So they, they matched Seattle's system. And not that, that that really kind of stymied Seattle. I don't think that was the thing that really measured. But what it creates is what John was talking about, where it really does create those, those wing back versus wing back, and who has the upper hand at a given moment. Seattle's had the upper hand with their wing backs all season long against four of the back teams. Mm -hmm. Now they face a team that's matching them. That obviously is something they're going to have to work on. When we face the three at the back, Ryan Schmetzer and his staff, when we face the three at the back, how do we attack them differently than we attack the team four at the back? Well said. Is this fair enough to say that that number 10 guy they've been missing would have made a difference here? I mean, given I, what Jackson is saying. I mean, you've got to imagine that Nico Ladero makes a huge impact for this club when he comes back. Uh, 
It sounds like he'll be shut down until June, uh, which it's, I'd rather personally have a fully healthy Nico Ladero than a 90% healthy Nico Ladero, uh, because especially when you've got uh, a 5 0 2 record through seven games, you have that luxury that you don't need your star player to be playing every game. I think he definitely helps uh, control the center of the field better today uh, if he is in there, and I think that that is one thing the Sounders are missing. Uh, but we've seen their kick still capable of winning matches and playing really good soccer without him there. So I think today still is a, a big disappointment uh, for the home team to not not really perform up to their abilities. If you, given Jackson's point and, and John Wall said, but do you maybe start thinking about we need another playmaker in the middle or somebody in there? Because Ladero is tendonitis. You just don't know sure. how that goes. I'm not saying he's not going to come back, but I mean. Yeah, and, and I think. Again, you can't, Schmesser always says you can't overreact to one game and you can't, you know, break down the whole system after one game. So it'll be interesting to see, especially when they come up against Austin. And as Schmesser said, it's a chance for a new opponent that we haven't seen before and refocus. I see, say, let's give it until that match, see how they perform in that one, and then really try to see personnel wise. Because, I mean, June is what, a couple weeks away. So it's not like you have to deal much longer without your captain out, so with your captain out, I should say. So I'll, I'll say give it a couple more games, just see how it develops until then, but not over yet. All right, so then just to wrap it up, I'll go around again. Jackson, you're okay. There's no kryptonite. The sky isn't falling with no. you. No, <laughs> the sky is I think, I think when we work the emotions, there's probably some fans right now, it's the stages of grief, right? Sure. And there's wow. some fans right now that are probably very, very angry. My wife's a therapist. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, there, 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 I, think, I think there are some fans that are very angry right now that should have been three points. Some fans who are understanding that, you know, it's probably a fair result when you look at the statistics as we blind out here. But at the end of the day, here's the facts. This team is 5-0-2. Oh, They're matched for their best 70 game starting club history. They're three points atop the supporter shield standings. They have a big cushion on top of the Western Conference. Right now, this team is playing, they, they, by the way, zero goals against in the run of play. Zero in seven games. That's mind-boggling statistics. Yeah. They lead on the goal differential right now is still plus 11. In every statistical category, they are the best in this league right now. And they still don't have Nicholas Ladero. Stefan Fry is out, and you're going to get Josh Tensio back. This team can get better, and they're already playing the best of any team in the league right now. That's the bottom line. So you may freak out right now about not getting three against Atlanta. Atlanta's going to be a good team. They're going to be a good team this season. We're seeing it already. This is an okay point, and looking back, we're going to see this as an okay point. At the end of the day, this team is still the best. Yeah. Well, you're at a grief meter as you go around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's something to be mildly concerned about, but not overly so. As Schmidt said in the post-game press conference, compared to that one one draw at LAFC, you know, all the guys in there felt more that it was a uh, point earned than two points dropped, whereas today it was really was those two points dropped instead of that one point earned. Um, and I think that this, you know, they're bound to have a down game every now and then. Um, it's, it's expected that you're not going to be perfect always. So I think they're going to move on past this and uh, regroup for Austin. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, I do want to point out, too, that Nuhu has been fantastic. He played probably the best game on the field for the Sounders today. Um, I, it's been really interesting to see him play that center back role and Deuce play it so well. Defensively, he's been Almost like fantastic. He needs to stop making those runs. Six <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're a center back That's now. What we Please. Oh. Please don't do those hey, runs good, anymore. Good luck trying to stop new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so way up there, since you're taller, is this stuff falling on top or not? <laughs> no, it's not at all. And I think uh, another point, if this was at Mercedes-Benz, you know, in Atlanta, would be saying this is a fair one point, you know, on the road. Um, so I think the fact that it was at home, they started to open up, the supporter section was a little more, a bit more full, is the drop off. The question was asked for Spencer, and you know, he kind of brushed it off and said, anytime you lose at home, it's professional sports. It's a letdown, but, or not lose, but you know, drop a point. Um, it's a letdown, but I think if this was a road game, we'd be happy with coming away with one. So you got to look at it from both sides. And like everybody said, we're at the top of the standing still. The West is in our control. And I think another thing, we're playing the top dogs. We're playing not traditional power Atlanta, they're new, but they still have won MLS Cup three slew, took LAFC, took LA Galaxy. These are big clubs that we're beating. So I think that's a good thing to also think we haven't lost any of them. I got my hat on because I think the sky might be a little bit starting to fall, <laughs> but I don't know. So we'll see. Absolutely. I think it's a let's just let's just wait and see. You know, it wasn't a loss. We'll see because the decision making process was a little bit for me ghastly, obviously what happened with 
with Brad Smith, and he's smart enough that he had to make that move. But maybe they're tired. Maybe they needed a break. We'll see. So post game on the pitch, Jackson Fells. 950 KGR. Thanks again for creating this. It's been going on for years and years. Thank you so much. And uh, John Marshall from Radio Cascadia. You guys are fantastic. You cover the whole West Coast like nobody else does. Eli Sports, Brandon Brown. Man, what are you broadcasting next in high school? Oh, uh, yeah, doing uh, high school sports this week. Got more uh, Metro League basketball coming up, so always fun to bounce around. All right, Mas Vida Mario with some amazing people from CascadiaSports.net. We'll see you again.